Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you very much for all your questions. Casey's here, Frank and Jules. Jules, how was your Christmas, mate? You got young, young kids. What was at the top of that list? Yeah, thank you. It was great. Thank you very much. It was chaotic uh, with the three kids, obviously. very. Uh, one was up really early, like 6.45. It's like, go back to bed That's now. That's not too That's all right, Jules. <laughs> Off he went back. 6.45 on Christmas Day. No, no thanks. So he went back to sleep, fair, fair play to him. And then, yeah, they, everybody got spoiled by Santa. It was, it was really lovely. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Everyone got a Philadelphia Eagles t-shirt, I assume? <laughs> from Uncle well, Gab. Well, I, I mean, yeah. In, in his dreams from Uncle Gab, you know, yeah. There's no way my kids are wearing that. They got they got Mbappe Real Madrid jerseys and then they had to yes, then, then Mbappe they had Real to Madrid. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> Believe. Believe. <laughs> uh, Frank, would Zidane be a fit as Brazil's national team coach? Yes, he would. He would. Even if I think he's uh, he's waiting for the the French uh, the French one. Yeah, I think Zizou could do very well with the Brazilian national team. I mean, that would be something special as well. I mean, I, I know when when I was told that uh, uh, Cap, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the coach um, of Real Madrid, um, Ancelotti, please. We spent all the show talking about him. Mr. Ancelotti, yeah, don't worry, Frank. We, do, we, do, we won't go, <laughs> won't go to Brazil. I was kind of frustrated because I wanted to see that. I mean, that would have been uh, something special because he's one of the best coach in the world for the biggest team. Uh, the biggest cl um, country of football, that would have been something special. But seeing Zizou, uh, head coach of the Brazilian national team, should be something special too. So I am, uh, I'm, I'm ready to see that. When will Deschamps leave, Jules? Well, I think after the, the Euros, the contract will right. be up. They might renew his contract. Philippe Diallo might want to keep him until the, uh, the World Cup in the US, Mexico and Canada in 2026. It would be a long time, obviously, because Didier arrived in 2012. So it's already a very long time, more than anybody wow. else in the, the history of the national team. So I think that might be the end, especially if, they, if we win the Euros. I think it would be perfect for Didier to live on that. And then the place is, as Frank said, is hot for, for Zidane already. Everybody's waiting for him. I think he's waiting for it too. But I would have also loved to see him for Brazil. He's the most non-Brazilian, Brazilian really, because he played football <laughs> like a Brazilian. The language barrier, I think, would have been an issue. But yeah, it would have been great. Frank, then what if he takes over and he's rubbish and you've got to be critical of your mate Zizou? <laughs> oh, uh, me critical to Zizou? So when? When that, when that happen? you know? Are you No, if he takes what, over you know? and you're rubbish, you know World Cup, out in the group stages and everyone's having to go at Zidane and you're like, no, it's not his fault. He's a lovely man. <laughs> Yeah, he's a lovely man, and I will always support him, you know, and uh, you, you, what he's saying is nonsense, you know, I've always, <laughs> always been behind Zizou. <laughs> no, no, but you know what, you know what, in 2006, if you remember the, the quarterfinal that uh, uh, France won against Brazil uh, with uh, Henri's, uh, Cherry's Henri's goal on the Zidane assist, you had only one Brazilian on the field, and that was Zizou. It was, wow. I think it was the best game that he played he played for the national team that day. I mean, that's crazy. If you see some highlights, though, that day, it was really Brazilian. Yeah, go and watch that game, by the way, on YouTube if you haven't seen it. As Frank says, Zizou was incredible, even though he thinks he's going to fail as French coach. Coach, uh, as a player, how <laughs> difficult... Frank, how difficult is it to buy into a disciplined defensive strategy such as West Ham yesterday, especially for offensive-minded players such as Bowen, Kudos and Paquetá? It is difficult, especially because those players don't have their, their mind set for that. They, they, they first think offensively, and it's always something difficult for them to switch and, uh, and do the, the, the dark job and, and, the, and the bad one. So uh, they have to force themselves into that tactic. So you have to be very supportive as a defender to make sure that uh, they're going to do the job. And uh, if you get a result like you, you got, that they got against Arsenal, you know, it's, uh, it's very productive for, for the future. You cannot class like that. I mean, we saw so many teams doing that. We, we saw with Tottenham and uh, Conte and Mourinho, after the players, they're fed up. They want to go back to something more, um, let's say, funnier, and, uh, and, uh, and they, 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 they want to attack. It's part of our job defensively because we are defenders or, or midfielders 
defensive midfielders to do that. But for those who are more offensive, it can last a little bit, but not too long. Well, what do you prefer as a keeper, okay? Like, well, well, so, sort of protect. Well, first of all, one of the primest examples recently has been Joao Felix at Atletico Madrid. Yep. If you go into a Diego Simeone side, you know you're going to have to suffer at some stage working without the ball. Sure. And, and, and the surprise move is going somewhere where you know that's the way they're going to play. Yep. And you thinking that, well, I can change the manager's mind. But look, I, I like it. I think it depends on the scenario. I think as a goalkeeper, I always kind of felt at a time that if we were going to play against a team that we were close in level, then I have no problem saying that I think I can make one more save than the other goalkeeper. Clearly, if, um, if, if, if I'm at Leicester City and we're playing against the Arsenals and the Man U's of that time frame, you can't play those teams heads up. You have to have 10 other players on the field that are going to suffer and fight and kick and scratch and do whatever it takes to try to get a result. So yeah, you, you, I think it depends on who you're playing against. You should see Jules on social media about Ariola because he had a good game. Obviously, he's he's uh, Paris born and bred, isn't he, Jules? When he's stinking, he's just French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not wrong. You're not wrong by saying that. I mean, you know, in the the, the fantasy football game that we play together. I mean, are you still playing this season, or you've you've given up? Because I can't see you in the ranking anymore. Sometimes, no, sometimes you all, I don't understand your English. Some, I, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Frank and Casey. <laughs> Frank and Casey. All right, Frank. Have you ever had words? With, have you ever had a? Oh, sorry. I forgot this question. Jules, I'm going to go to you with this one. If Manchester City and Aston Villa were to hypothetically swap managers, with Pep going to Villa and Unai Emery going to City, where would the teams finish this season Ooh. in the Premier League table? Wow. Ah, oh, well, that's a great question. Um, I think Pep would succeed anywhere, really. I really believe that. I think he's one of those, just like a Carlo Ancelotti, even if Carlo at times maybe at Napoli, sometimes at Bayern a little bit, didn't really go out, didn't work out the way he would have wanted. I, I think Pep would succeed anywhere, really. And I think he could take this Villa team to the title. For Unai, we go back to the debate that we've had many times. It's clearly working better for him in not just a smaller club, but in a, in a, in a slightly different environment than the top, top club with high pressure and high expectations. PSG and Arsenal being a good example when Sevilla, Villarreal, and obviously Villa now work really well for him. He puts his people in place. He's got all his like really close ally with him, allies with him. There's not the pressure that you could find in a top, top club. So Unai at Emery at City, I'm not so sure in that kind of dressing room if that would work out, what he asked, and he, even his own personality, all the, the pressure around the club on him, all the media attention, all of that, which is not exactly the same at Villa because it's just not the same exposure at all. So for Pep at Villa, I've got no doubt. Emery at City, maybe slightly more skeptical. I think we'd all love to see Pep go somewhere you know, let's say, let's you know, go a year back and what Vincent Company did at Burnley and then now the struggles in, in the Premier League. Yeah. We, uh, where have we seen Pep? Know, why, we, why we've why seen Pep at, the, at the, one of the best Barcelona teams or one of the best club teams in the history of club football. And then obviously Bayern have had their way with the Bundesliga yeah. for a spell. And then coming to Man City and, and having the budgets that he's had to create Man City into what they have had. Yes, you still have to win. And he's been phenomenal, but I'd love to see him go somewhere, take yeah, a small team, get him promoted, and he's then... not going to do that. Right, Frankie? It's not, it's and then Hollywood, see him go... Well, I know it's not Hollywood. He's not going to take over Wrexham. That, that, yeah. That's why we're in a show talking about hypotheticals. Hey, well, no, we know. We know. Wow, well, you, you don't have to go to Wrexham, but uh, let's say that we... We give Guardiola Aston Villa, or we give Guardiola Brighton. I would love to see how he can achieve something. I think Pep is Champions League, Emery is Europa League. Uh, that's right. how to oh. define them. And I think Pep Guardiola could do something very good with Brighton, but I want to see it. How he can manage mm. without spending million uh, to, to get the best player, how he can get the dressing room following him. That would be very, very interesting.
Well, if there's certain points deductions, who knows? Right, <laughs> uh, Frank and Casey. Frank, have you ever had words with a referee after a match? Yes, and I still have three games banned in Europe because of insulting <laughs> yeah. a ref, you know, after That's a game. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, it, it, it was in uh, Zurich with Chelsea, and uh, uh, Roberto Di Matteo got injured, but big one. He had a fracture on his uh, fibula and never played anymore football. And uh, the ref gave, uh, a, a, I think, a, a free kick for sure against him and I think a yellow card, and we lost the game, and it also didn't give any uh, some uh, free kicks just five minutes before the end for Gianfranco Zola to score, and maybe allow, allowing us to, to be qualified. And I got mad after the game, and he made a report, and I got three games. And I what did you do? Waiting just give us a little bit of context. Them. How mad were you? What were you doing? Oh, I would say you're definitely a French, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> oh, he was French. Oh. oh, yeah, he was French. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you know, I, I, I like to stay domestic. Domestic, I like that. I like that. <laughs> I shout at people. Uh, no, I don't think so. You're quite mild-mannered, aren't you? No, no, I mean, I had my moments of having, yeah. you know, uh, conversations with referees, but it never, I, I don't even think I remember the stadiums where they're, Right. Changing rooms were, and it never really, I don't, I don't think it would, I, I, it wasn't in my personality to, to continue it. Right. It was either in the moment and I'm yeah. yelling at somebody about something, but then... It's like Frank, Frank carries a grudge. Correct. Ask yeah. him about Chris Sutton. For That's sure. That's another grudge yeah. he yeah. carries. You know, yeah. uh, Casey, for years, the US Men's National, oh, sorry, I keep missing questions. Jules, what do you think of Yoris coming to MLS in the twilight of his career? Um, I think that's great. I really think he's great. He's great for MLS, for, for LAFC to start with because he's still a very good goalkeeper. He's been training really well. I suppose, okay, he hasn't played this season because he was not really meant to be, to still be there. But the move that he could have had last summer to Lazio, for example, or even back home to Nice just didn't happen for different reasons, not really so much on his side. But he kept really fit. He kept training with, with Postecoglou and oh. the first team. Okay, didn't play and he might be slightly short of match fitness. This is like a, a PowerPoint bit. presentation about yeah, why yeah. Hugo Yori should sure. move to MLS. Goodness yeah. me, Jules. You ask me a question. I'm answering <laughs> to you seriously. Yes, it's great for him, for MLS and for LFC. Even if you're not too happy with him, you grumpy old man. <laughs> no, I don't think it's like his agent. <laughs> Look at him. He's been brilliant. He's been training very well and trying very hard. Well done, Hugo. Do you like this move, Case? <laughs> Everything is predicated when a player comes from Europe, their attitude. Right. If, if they come to MLS and they treat it with respect, then I think it's a great move. I think if they come in and think well, they're getting what a paid get. vacation. <laughs> oh. What's that, Frankie? That's what you're going to get, Casey. From, from, from uh, Hugo, it's what you're going to get. He's been so professional. I mean, there is one thing well, that you can take uh, from him. It's the example that he's going to show to young players, to young professional MLS players. He's right. going to show them the way to behave and to train and to think football, soccer. Well, and I, I think and it's I think a great. It's a, it's a, it's a, Frank, that's exactly God. what LAFC got from Chiellini. Is they got that veteran player to come in and do things the right way and to show the young players what it takes to be yep. at that level for so long at that age and everything. And so if they could get the same from a player like Hugo Lloris, perfect. Casey, for years, the US men's national team had you, Friedel, Tim Howard, arguably our best players were our keepers. Do you feel let down by this generation <laughs> of keepers? What are they missing? I, I, I'm not necessarily let down. I think it was just an anomaly. Oh, it's better, isn't it? Let well, people still look at you as the best. Well, but I think you don't want a better goalkeeper coming. Come on, Dan. I think it was just an anomaly, right? I mean, there was at one stage uh, where twenty percent of the starting goalkeepers in the Premier League were American. Wow. So it was, you know, obviously the, yes. the mentioned Marcus Handeman in there. So, so that's not happening again. Right. I'm sorry. It it it, it just happens. There was at one stage where there was three Finnish goalkeepers starting in the Premier League. Right. That's not happening again. So there's these weird situations where it happens. I mean, Marcus Hanman right now would have 
50 caps right. if he wasn't at, at, at that point in time. Yeah, so it is, it's, it's, it's frustrating sometimes when you're in an environment where the competition is so great and then at other times where you're like, oh my God. You can sit on the bench and still be number one. Correct. Uh, final question. Frank, are you all right? What's going on? Frank's turned into a Bond villain. Oh, yep. I have <laughs> Lemon coming to say hi to uh, oh. our friends, you know. Hello, Lemon. Yeah, God. Oh, God. Yeah. They look happy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, Frank, what are you and Lemon's plans for, for New Year's? Anything fun? No, well, I'm going to be involved in the play. I have two performances at 6 p.m. and 7.30, so I'm going to go back, come, come back home around 9.30. So we'll have just a tete-a-tete -tete with my lovely wife, and, uh, and we're going to share it with the, the, the dog and the two cats. So, but that's oh, going to be beautiful. That's only going to be the two of us. Oh, what about you, Jules? Are you having a tete-a-tete -tete with? Nah, big party, you know, here. We, we're younger than, than the Lebeufs, so big party, <laughs> friends, you know, all of them. <laughs> oh, wow. Is Gab invited? No, Gab, I think Gab, Gab, Gab loves a tete-a-tete -tete for New Year's Eve, and that's it. Oh, that's it, with, with himself, in the mirror. Uh, yeah. Casey? <laughs> <laughs> a mirror! Group. A mirror! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Group of friends probably end up, up up at one of the ski resorts looking at some Dirtbag local band oh, playing, having perfect. some. Yeah, it'll oh, should very be nice interesting. Case. Yep. Very good. Yep. I'll be here. Don't worry. What about you, party? Dan? What about I'm here? I'm, I'm here, and we got the show on Sunday. So then the evening, I think it'll be. Uh, it'll just be a quiet family evening, Frank. Because then we got New Year's Day afterwards. Just professional. Always here. Oh, always put oh, the show first. Oh, That's the way it nice. goes. Wow. I'm just going to be <laughs> writing love life letters to Hugo Lloris. <laughs> 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 to LA and see you. Jill says you're lovely. Uh, that is it. We are done. Thank you very much. As I said, we will be back tomorrow. Uh, some big games uh, right across the board. Stevie Nicol is back from his holiday. Oh, with tales of all the fun and frolics I'm sure he's been up to.